Right. If you have been given a bill by an architect at Kwandi Sabir, and they said to you, your building, your project back home in Africa is going to cost you 2.4 million. And you said to yourself, how am I going to afford this? Can I afford this? Stick around and I will share with you some of the tips that I am using on my project in Osaka to reduce the cost of building back home after this. Why not jump onto this idea? Now listen to this and let's just wait. Start building. Start building. You could say that everyone can do it and not just... About 100 mil. Now if you look at that, that's more or less like a slap in itself. I was dealing with the girls who was up for a night Yeah. So you in the cut with that wifey demeanor. Looking so bored out your mind though You kinda give me the sign so Conversations Hey, welcome back. My name is Kelvin Perry and this is The Awakening. If we haven't met on this series, on this channel, what I try to do is to share what I know about building back home. It is all about motivating, encouraging, and indeed sharing the knowledge that I've gained so many years in the construction industry, working as a quantity surveyor, and of course, living in the diaspora and trying to build back home. There are so many lessons that I've learned over the period of time, and the idea is to try and make sure that you don't make mistakes because we are looking at moving forward we are this channel is about being positive yes there are so many issues we will not ignore them but we will not dwell on that we will not give them time to discuss them we will just march on learn from what we have experienced in the past and then try to make sure that we do the best that we can do right if you are new on this channel thank you very much for being part of this channel and please remember to hit that like button subscribe and smack that bell and to all those that have already and have subscribed and they're part of this community thank you very much and hey shout out to all my brothers and sisters uh, on facebook in our uh, in our group so check it out uh, zambia's builders living in the diaspora an amazing an amazing an amazing group on facebook right so talking about being part of this and support please remember to buy this book it's on Amazon building dreams across continents subheading there is how to build in Zambia while living in the diaspora now this book is about as I have said it's about motivating it's about encouraging it's about identifying what drives us to try and build back home what are the benefits how can we navigate the construction industry back home it's not just about Zambia it's about Africa if you are living in the diaspora right now let's get on to what I want to share today now hey I'm right now I'm going through the process of identifying or engaging an architect that we are going to use for the project and that architect obviously at one point will be able to come on this channel to basically uh, talk about what the main issues that made us uh, come up with that design that we've identified. So we will discuss those issues um, with an architect very soon. So now let's talk about costs. Now it, this, the stage where I am is very critical. Now it's a very critical stage because you need to basically have a list of your wants and your needs as you obviously lay out what your design uh, intent, what your design, uh, your proposal of what you want the architect to design. It's very important to, ver to be very, uh, to be cost conscious as you come up with some of the solutions. The designer or the architect will, will can draw anything, can design anything, but it's very important. And I think it's at this stage where you need to possibly maybe engage uh, the services of a quantity surveyor, someone that will be able to help you uh, come up with the cost 
It's all right. Keep <laughs> on going. That's all right. Yeah, really appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So, when you are going through the design sort of stage, it's very important that you basically. Engage, if you can, uh, a quant the services of a quantity surveyor or somebody on our group. I've always said, get in touch with me. If you're going through a design, if you're going through the pre-construction stage, which is what we call it in construction, pre-construction stage of your, um, your building, get in touch with me. And I will be able to say, oh, well, you can tweak this, you can do this. If you do this, you can be able to save so much money. But during that stage, it's very important and to do some market testing, ask for prices, check how much it is going to cost to do certain things so that you have an idea of what it's going to cost you. Very critical, very crucial. Don't go in there and say to yourself, you know what, yeah, because I'm in the diaspora, yeah, pounds, dollars. Before you know it, you know, it will cost you quite a lot. So it's very important that you are open-minded, aware of, you know, the cost of what you are designing. And if the architect can give you some of the cost, break it down. Don't go for a square meter rate and say, oh, how much is roughly? Break it down. Check how much the blocks are. Check uh, how much the door frames are, the window frames that are being designed. And, and, and if you can, look at alternative solutions that you can employ if that becomes very expensive to do. Right, thank you. So, when you try to do, by doing that, you will be able to save quite a lot of money, I think. You will be able to do that. The other thing that I would say is, obviously, as you try to uh, look at compare prices, as you try to uh, look at uh, alternative materials, look at doing, uh, seeing if you, can build, if you can do some of the uh, some of the works, some of the works yourself, or manufacture some of the products that will go onto site. I mean, things like caves. You can make caves. You can buy. Um you can buy a mold and, and you start making caves right there on site. You can make blocks on site. It's very important that you come up with a program of works and allow enough time for you to be able to raise money, for you to be able to do things that I'm talking about. Because if you rush, you will find that you might end up saying, I'm stuck and I'll go and borrow. Now, so talking about molds. Now, in construction, there's what we call uses. And when you're talking about formal Work. You know, I'll use foam work. Now, foam work, if you have a copper to make a monevica ring beam, if you copper, that is foam work. Now, so when you use a mold, if you just go in and say, you know what, it's for my build, my beautiful house, my dream house, I'm going to make the caves, I'm, gonna make, I'm going to make the bricks, I'm going to make the paving as a standalone project, buying those uh, molds will cost you quite a lot. And that takes us to what we are trying to do. By coming together, you can spread the cost of buying those mods, ultimately filtering into the cost of your product, whether it's the, the, the caves, whether it's the bricks, whether it's the paving bricks, because you have allowed for a number of uses. If you're just going to use it once, it will cost you quite a lot. But if you use it a number of times, and there's, for instance, where we are in Lusaka, we have two plots that are next to uh, to each other uh, and we are all in the diaspora so whatever we use here we're going to use on there so which means that we can spray the cost of buying those modes now if we get more people and this is what we are trying to do it doesn't matter where you are whether you are uh, your, your building is uh, away from where our site is we can come back we can come together and tr possibly try and work out work do an exercise which I'm working out which I'm building up uh, an exercise to show how much money we can save by doing these things now a, a, a lot of benchmarks I am working on I'll be able to share uh, that information in the future I'm collecting this information and this information will be able to make to inform you how best you can do this thing
things and, and how much you can save by doing this. So I'm working on those benchmarks and I'm creating that database which I will be able to share with members of the group. Now, so it's really important. So if you come together, you'll be able to spray that cost and ultimately reduce how much it will cost you for individual caves, blocks, paving bricks by obviously engage by buying those modes, spray the cost of modes by the number of people that are using, are going to use it. So there are so many things that you can do to ultimately drive the cost of some of these elements that you will be using into your building or building your dream house. Now, I am very serious about building back home and that's the reason why I'm sharing and we should try to make sure that whatever we are discussing, whatever we are doing here, can does work and I intend to show you that it does work and the cost of the building ultimately the cost of whatever project we are doing I will share when we finish it's gonna take maybe I don't know it's gonna take months it's gonna take years we don't know but we will keep on going uh, slowly until we get there you know we'll keep on going we keep on encouraging ourselves and that's what it is now I hope what I've shared today does give you an idea but if you are not clear about what I've just shared today Today, please remember to get in touch with me uh, I will be able to answer whatever questions that you might have and of course we will be bringing experts on this channel we've got a number of people that are lined up and we're just finalizing the questions and making sure that uh, the questions and making sure that what you want to hear is answered in that session that we'll have with professionals coming soon as I end here please remember to uh, support us by buying this book uh, on Amazon that will definitely be appreciated and of course remember to subscribe to this channel we really appreciate your support now it's a lovely day today I am sitting outside at the park overlooking a nice park there and of course you've seen people walking by but hey that's all part of it and I can see somebody there fishing uh, but it is beautiful it is we get into summer here in the UK really nice that's the reason why you see I think it's about 22 degrees so we're really enjoying the, the Sun so until next time God bless you and please keep building dreams back home God bless you